Information Security Risk Assessment. We have moved on to another chapter of ISO 27001 and this requirement is very important. This is the heart of the information security management system, the core element from here, from the risks identified and evaluated, uh, an organization starts to implement controls. First of all, it has to see what the risks for uh, information security it has. Now, the general requirement from the standard is that the organization has to develop and to apply a risk assessment process. Easy to be said, quite difficult to implement. First of all, the organization should have a methodology. How it performs this risk assessment. I will present here an approach, which is the most commonly used approach, but is not the only one. The standard gives freedom to the organization to use any approach it chooses to uh, assess its information security risks. So, in this approach, in this methodology, the first step is to identify information assets and then try to identify what are the threats and the vulnerabilities related to those assets. I will have an example in the next slide so you will have a much clearer image, but let's go through the steps of the methodology first of all. Then evaluate the impact. What would be the impact if the confidentiality, integrity or availability of the information on those information assets were to be compromised. This is an exercise of imagination, of course. Uh, the impact can be evaluated in money, but there are also aspects like the organizational image or any other sort of quantification. Then calculate the likelihood. How probable it is for such an event to happen. Of course, a good source of, um, of uh, inspiration here is past experience. Using uh, what uh, has been has happened in the past can be uh, useful to, uh, to have an idea of what may happen. Estimate the risk level, which is a, a product of uh, impact and uh, likelihood. Then assign risk owners, people or departments or structures in the organization which have the responsibility to manage this uh, type of risk and then define whether the risk level is acceptable or not. That means you have to have some criteria saying risks above this level are not acceptable and uh, which is uh, risks that are under this level are to be considered acceptable. As I said, an example, we have as information assets, the information stored on mobile devices. The threat, one of the threats is theft. Vulnerabilities are, uh, there is no security, access security control to the mobile device, no password or no touch ID. There are no settings installed for uh, remote wiping of the data. Once you see it has been stolen, you should be able to remotely wipe all the data. The impact now here, it's up to each organization to decide how serious and how, um, uh, how much of an impact the, the, the information on, uh, on the mobile device can have on the organization. The likelihood, the same system, it's up to the organization to, to have an idea how, how often this can happen and the risk level is quantified as the product of impact and likelihood. It should be uh, uh, compared to the criteria for acceptable or not, and it should be assigned to a risk owner. The estimation of uh, impact, likelihood, and of course, risk level can be done in some uh, different ways. It's up to the organization to choose the, the system that suits its needs. It can be a qualitative uh, estimation using levels like high, low, medium. It can be a quantitative uh, system that use numbers. And it can be a semi-quantitative system that use 
numbers for uh, ratings to generate a level it's up to any uh, to the to the choice of the organization to use any of the systems as i said there have to be some criteria once you uh, establish the system that you use for quantifying levels you will then decide whether what is above medium if you use qualitative systems is unacceptable or uh, if you if uh, the level is above a certain number this is unacceptable and what is uh, beyond this level is considered to be acceptable risk as i said risk owners are the persons or the structures the departments inside the organization that are accountable for the management of that specific risk remember risk assessment is something subjective you are not uh, required by the standard it's not mandatory to use a certain methodology to use a certain software tool or to use a certain system to quantify to identify and quantify the information security risks but what is important is to make all the effort necessary to make uh, a list of risks as comprehensive as you can and you can use as uh, inspiration the Annex A or the second part of this course where we will discuss uh, most elements, uh, most common elements of information security for most organizations and you can see from where you can choose possible risks for your organization. There are also standards on this topic like ISO 31000 which is a standard a family of standards in fact dedicated to risk management there is ISO 27005 I have mentioned it in the first lessons when we discussed about the 27000 family this is about um, also about risk uh, evaluation and this uh, process of risk assessment should be shall be documented so you have to have papers demonstrating that you have performed this uh, risk uh, assessment papers or electronic documents of course information security risk treatment this is the next logical step of course in the risk management process we have evaluated the risks we know their level um, we have decided which is acceptable and which is not acceptable and of course we have to do something about them we have to treat them and there are several options first of all avoiding the risk uh, the most straightforward difficult to implement because we have to stop a risky activity the next one to control the risk through uh, reducing its level and to reduce the level we have to reduce either the potential impact or the likelihood or both of them through some controls some actions another option is to transfer the risk to a third party and usually insurance companies provide this kind of services accepting the risk is another decision that an organization can take and it should be based on a, a, a sound reasoning and uh, some um, some reasons to accept a certain risk may be the cost of mitigating the risk is higher than the cost uh, the potential cost of the impact or maybe the organization is pursuing a certain opportunity and she decides to accept a certain risk at least for a period of time or maybe the risk is uh, of uh, low level and it's considered acceptable by the organization also it can be a combination of those options but whichever the decision is for treating the risk it has to be a balanced one it has to take into consideration the need for resources because it costs something and also the potential impact be it financial be it about the safety of the staff uh, compliance with legislation or maybe the image the reputation of the company the standard uh, ISO 27001 requires the organization to have controls in place for treating the risks and this is why Annex A of the standard has been developed to help organizations not to forget possible controls which are applicable to their activities 
The second part of the course is about controls meant to treat potential risks. Now, the next requirement is for the organization to produce what is called a statement of applicability. Uh, the statement of applicability is in fact the map of the implementation of the information security management system in the organization. This statement includes all the controls implemented by the organization, their justification for inclusion, what, why they are implemented, whether they are implemented or not yet, and justification in case of excluding some controls from Annex A. It is important to know that uh, the organization is free to develop its own other controls apart from those in Annex A, but those are mandatory if they are applicable to the activities of the, of the organization. So, for example, in Annex A we have some controls which are uh, meant or applicable to software development. And maybe an organization does not develop software, then it is allowed to exclude those controls uh, objectives and say we do not uh, develop software so these controls are not applicable to our activities but what is applicable cannot be excluded of course and the statement of applicability is the total of controls why they are implemented and if uh, uh, some controls are excluded why they are excluded here I have a, an example of how can a statement of applicability look. The number of the controls are the numbers from the standard, the controls, uh, a detailed uh, explanation of the control, a justification for inclusion or for exclusion depending on the case, the, the situation of the control, is it implemented or not, and an evidence of implementation. We say it is implemented but how can we prove that it really is implemented. The next step as we go on is for the organization to develop what is called a risk treatment plan. And the risk treatment plan should include of course the risk which is being addressed, the level of the risk according to the assessment that the organization has performed and we have discussed in the previous lesson, the actions which are uh, proposed to treat this risk who is in charge, what, uh, who is the person or who is the department, the structure in charge to implement those controls, what resources are needed for implementing the controls and the time frame for implementation. How long does it take for us to implement the control to address a certain risk? Well, uh, in the risk treatment process, there is this concept of residual risk because uh, most risk cannot be eliminated. It's not possible to always uh, completely uh, avoid a certain risk by stopping an activity. So you implement some actions to mitigate the risk level. But then when you assess it again, you see that it still has some risk, a lower level risk. And this risk that remains after controls are implemented, after it is treated, it is the residual risk and the organization is required to have an evaluation of this residual risk to see whether it is acceptable or not because if you have residual risk which is also which is still in the not acceptable category then you have to to work with it uh, further on we have discussed in the previous lesson about the risk owner the uh, person or the structure on the, in the organization which is in charge with dealing with the management of a certain risk. And uh, you have to, to obtain the accept the approval of risk owners for the risk treatment plan and for the residual risk because it's in their management so they have to be aware what are the actions meant to treat the risk uh, in their responsibility and what is the residual risk that will still remain after uh, control actions are being implemented. And last, last element, all this process of treating risks 
and of course the statement of applicability they all have to be documented so there has to be uh, a written uh, documents about risk treatment plan and statement of applicability information security objectives every management system standard requires four objectives and ISO 27001 is no exception so the organization has to establish information security objectives that need to be consistent with the information security policy that should be measurable as much as this is possible because if they are measurable it's easier to evaluate their accomplishment they have to take into consideration information security requirements the risk assessment and also the risk treatment plan that we have discussed they have to be communicated so that people are aware of what are the information security objectives of the company that they work for and they have to be updated when they are uh, accomplished or when uh, their accomplishment becomes unattainable usually top management decides information security objectives and they have to be documented the objectives are particular to every organization of course it de they depend on the activity the uh, context the uh, risks information security risks the uh, needs for protection of resources that each organization has but where to look uh, to to define your objectives well first of all look to the business needs what are the business needs of your organization and what are the needs for protection of your information protection against damage against theft against uh, abuse misuse then look at the needs for awareness of your personnel look at the business continuity requirements what are the requirements for your organization to be able to continue provide the uh, services or the product in case of uh, major disruption and also look at the technology that your organization is using and maybe the needs for uh, switching to another technology examples of objectives may uh, refer to improving legal compliance maybe to reducing or eliminating uh, information security incidents eliminating fraud if uh, it's applicable in your case uh, switching as i said to uh, a more competitive technology and so on it all depends on the specifics of each company now once established the objectives have to be accomplished and the requirement of iso 27001 is to have a plan a plan for achieving objectives and this plan will detail what will be done what actions are to be taken in order to achieve the objectives then what resources are going to be used because when you decide an objective it uh, involves some resources be it financial people equipment time who is responsible who will be in charge to implement the actions meant to achieve the objectives what is the time frame for achieving the objectives and how the results are going to be evaluated of course the achievement of security objectives has to be monitored and the objectives as i said need to be updated whenever uh, it's uh, a need for this <music>